They say credit problems will improve once consumers start spending again. Crews have reached 100% containment on all four fires. The crowds behind me down on Main Street continue to grow. We're talking about bullying, and about one out of every three kids is bullied every day. And instead, put up this massive billboard, letting the entire Black Hills know their stand. That fairy tale night in May was also a victory for the team's sales staff. Track them down with the license plate number. <laughs> Jim Peters is all over yeah. it. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Megan Polera. It's a program that tries to keep convicted drunk drivers from offending again, but Pennington County's 24-7 program seemed to offend its neighbors wherever it went. For the past year and a half, the program made its home in a downtown neighborhood. Now that it's gone, residents are saying thank you for getting out of their hood. It's the start of the football season okay. and the grill is cooking. But this okay, group right. is celebrating more March, than just touchdowns. Um, Pennington County's 24 7 sobriety program has moved out of their neighborhood. It's a victory all in its own. Dancing on a cloud. <laughs> it was dancing on a cloud and waiting for the moment where I could just sit out in my yard like the good old days and just relax with my friends and neighbors. Back in March of 2009, the 24-7 program set up shop in this residential neighborhood on Quincy Street. The program attempts to keep convicted drunk drivers from offending again by requiring breathalyzer testing. About 500 to 600 people participate in the program. Many twice a day, the line would start here at the front door and stretch all the way back. Cars parked wherever space could be found. Newman lives just feet from the old building and says the past year has been a living hell. Loud, chaotic. Uh, kind of a lot of a lot of exhaust and just not a lot of fun. The program moved out last week after being forced to find a new location. The building was leased from National American University, and the school cited a need for more classroom space. But for nearly a year before then, Newman and her friends fought tooth and nail to get the program out of their neighborhood. And now that it is, Newman says life is good again. We're really excited that we can have like peace and quiet and birds and crickets like everybody else now. <laughs> when did they? 24-7 program is now located in a strip mall on Campbell Street. The race for South Dakota's lone seat in the U.S. House is heating up. All three candidates arguing about which one is best suited to fix the nation's problems. In a debate in here on this weekend, Republican challenger Christy Nome said Democratic Representative Stephanie Hurst Sandlin has become a supporter of the liberal Democratic agenda. Nome says she would work to reduce federal spending. Hurst Sandlin says she has opposed Democratic leaders by voting against health care reform and bailout measures. She says she always does what is right for South Dakota. But in Independent candidate B. Thomas Marking of Custer says Hersa Sandlin and Nome are both part of the partisan fighting between Republicans and Democrats that has left the political system broken. A White House official says President Barack Obama will ask Congress to permanently extend research and develop tax credits for businesses as a way to spur economic growth. Obama will outline the proposal Wednesday during a speech on the economy in Cleveland. The official says the $100 billion proposal will be paid for by closing corporate tax breaks for multinational corporations and oil and gas companies. The plan will also include an extension of hiring incentives and a payroll tax holiday. BP reaches another major milestone in the Gulf. Crews raised the failed blowout preventer out of the ocean today. It took 30 hours to haul it from a mile beneath the sea to the surface. The 50-foot, 300-ton device is a key piece of evidence. Investigators will use it to understand what led to the Deepwater Horizon explosion. In the meantime, BP re replaced it with a working blowout preventer ahead of the final well kill. Thunderstorms moved through the area last night, sparking several wildfires. Firefighters responded to three separate lightning-caused fires in Custer County. The Ghost Fire is located one mile south of Highway 40, west of Hermosa. It's 100 percent contained and scorched less than an acre. The Long Ridge Fire is located two miles south of Red Canyon Road. As of 6 o'clock this evening, the fire is 2.5 acres in size and is 90 percent contained. The Hawk Wright fire is also located just south of Red Canyon Road. That fire burnt more than 10 acres. Soggy and cold weather is headed our way tomorrow. Let's check in now with meteorologist Jim Peterson, who has a first look at your forecast. Jim, good evening. Good evening, Megan. I'll be back with a full seven-day forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right. Thank you, Jim.
The towns of Nislin and Newell are celebrating their 100th anniversaries. The two towns sprang up in the Belfouche River Valley after the completion of Ormond Dam a century ago. Today was the big day for the celebration in Nisland, and Black Hills Fox reporter Al Van Zee takes us there. Still ahead tonight on Black Hills Fox News at 9, they're rocking to the beat, hoping their tunes will inspire others to donate to the Ronald McDonald House. Find out why the charity is so important to this band right after the break.